success. Yan, praktisado kayo ha. Ah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And parang tahimik sila ulit. Isa pa nga, amen? amen? Yon, praise God. Grabe. Excited ako dahil sumasagot kayo. And today, I know we are all excited. Hindi lang ako. I know you are because we have learned so much last week. Ano yung topic natin last week? For? For you and me? Ano? Forgiveness. From forgiveness, we have freedom. And right now, we are going to talk about something na minsan ayaw natin gawin. Now, since we are free and we are, um, we are free and forgiven by God, we are going to talk about obedience and submission. Yeah. Ready na ba kayo magsay- masaktan? Say amen. Amen. Grabe. Ayan. First, before tayo mag-proceed, may papakita muna ako mga pictures sa inyo and alam ko nakaka-relate kayo dito. Can we show the door na? Yan. Mga kapatid, sa pananampalataya, pag nakikita nyo yan, anong madalas nating ginagawa? Tinutulak, hindi hinihila kasi push. Next. Sabi dito, ano yan? Usually, ito ay para sa mga disabled. Sinong disabled dito? Wala. Na-try na nyo na mag-part dyan? Sana hindi pa. Sana hindi pa. Dito, pre, malapit, pre. Malapit sa pintuan, pare. Yan. Next. Yan. Please observe safety protocols. And I believe talagang dahil sa mga assuring teams natin in sa brain, you are all wearing this uh, mask and Most probably, face shield. Of course. Yan. Ito yung favorite ng mga boys. Anong madalas natin ginagawa dyan? Nag? Nag? Nagkakwentuhan. Iwag rinig ko ah. Nagsisihar at nagbubuhos. Okay yun? Sino dito yung nagbubuhos sa CR? Woo! Amen. Grabe. Una pa lang po tayo. Next. Yan. Sinong natry ng kumain sa kantin mga kapatid? Nakabili na ba kayo sa Real Life Ministries? Bili kayo mga kapatid and then ibalik natin yung mga ganitong upuan. And of course, yan. Na yung nag-hello na? Na? Baso. Saan nilalagay ang basong pinag-inuman? Sa tabi ng galon na blue. O yon? Saan nilalagay ang baso? Sa basurahan. And Of course, favorite natin to. Sino yung nasa seat number 21? Tas kamay. Yan, kuya. May number ka dyan? Praise God. If nakakuha ka ng number, praise the Lord. May one step ahead ka na ngayon dito sa preaching na to. And lastly, eto. Eto yung favorite na issue. Medyo. Yan. I won't ask any one of you kung sa kabilang side ba kayo pumupunta, but I want to ask each one of you, anong nangyayari sa inyo pag namali kayo ng pasok? Nakaka? Nakakahiya para iba yung nakita mo. Likod. Mm, likod. Kasi yung mga boys lagi nakaganon, di ba? Kaya magaling din yung gumawa ng CR, nakatalikod eh. Now, what is the purpose of this? I just want to establish these things na madaling gawin. Looks familiar, right? Because we are all particular na ginagawa natin itong lahat. Madaling gawin, ay madaling gawin pero mahirap sundin. Tama? Parang push and pull lang yan sa pintuan eh. Anong nakalagay doon, Kuya Eman? Push or pull? Pull yata. Sinong tumulak? Sinong guilty na tumulak? Ako. ba? Diba? Lahat tayo. Honestly, we are guilty of some of this small Things, but right now, we will proceed and going to talk about what is obedience. First, obedience means to obey and to be obedient. Both words come from the Latin word obedere, ob- obedere, which literally means to listen to. So when you obey, you listen. And of course, somehow it is also defined as we pay attention to. Normally, these days, mas naiintindihan natin kapag negative effect, no? Or negative approach. Usually, what are the things that we fail to do or obey? Una, 
Example ng hindi natin masunod. Mga bagay na hindi natin pinapakinggan. Example, anak, magugas ka na. ba diba? Hindi natin nasusunod kasi bakit? Tengang kawali mo na tayo. Yan. Hindi ko narinig si mama. Ayoko siyang pakinggan. Dito lang muna ako. Cha-cha. Next. One thing, one thing that we easily disobey is the things that we don't pay attention to. We disobey because we don't pay attention to. Example, devotion mo. Hindi mo ma-obey kasi out of focus ka sa crush. Yan, di ba? Hindi natin ma-obey kasi iba yung focus natin. Medyo kumikirot na ba, mga kapatid? <laughs> Next, submission. So, ati pa, what's the difference between obedience and submission? We would define submission, it means to place oneself, to place ourselves under the control of another. So, ibig sabihin, if ikaw yan, you place yourself under one person or you are subjected under submission. It means to yield oneself from the Latin word submitere. It means to yield to lower down, to let down, or to put under or to reduce. It means when you submit, you are always one step lower than your superior. Meron kayong class president, tama? Sinusunod niyo siya? Pag sinabing mag-attendance tayo, tapos susundin niyo lang siya pag nag-walk out na siya, kapag face-to-face. Yan. Mahirap yung left the group ngayon. Eh. Walang mag-a-add sa'yo. Okay. Today, we are going to talk about how we obey God and people. How we obey God and people. We'll not just focus on our personal obedience, but how we submit to one another. Our main text will be Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 to 21. And before we proceed, let's ask the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this word of yours. I pray, Lord, may you prepare our hearts. Open it surgically, Panginoon. Buksan mo, Panginoon, nang makita namin yung mga bagay na ginagawa namin na hindi pleasing sa iyong paningin. And right now, Lord God, with much wisdom that comes from you, with much compassion, O God, we will obey because we love you. And this is our submission to you, O God. May you guide everything, all these people, and may we enjoy your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. It says in verse 1, follow God's example. Una pa lang. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly love children. I would like to remind everyone, lahat tayo anak ng Panginoon. So we are therefore sub- subjected to follow God's example. Next, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Mga kapatid, I know we all receive God. And with our salvation comes through obedience. True obedience to God is motivated by love. Tama? Walking in love is not the opposite of walking in obedience to God. Hindi yan magkahiwalay. When you love, you obey. They are the same thing. Di ba? Kapag minamahal mo ang Panginoon, susundin mo siya. Di ba pag nagmahal ka, sinusunod mo? Di ba? Yung sinaming kumain ka na, susunod ka, di ba? Kasi galit na eh. Sino ang di nakarelate dito dyan? Kumain ka na, eka! Kasi galit na siya, kakain ka naman. Hindi ka kakain dahil gutom ka. Hindi ka kakain dahil gusto mo lang. Gusto mo kasi siyang i-please, kaya kakakain. Tama? Amen? Amen. Yan. Obedience should be the fruit of our love, most specially with the Lord. Imagine, kaya nating sumunod sa mga jowa-jowaan natin, pero hindi nating sum- kayang sumunod sa Panginoon. Now we will assess how can we follow the Lord. One divine truth about obedience is that God demonstrated what obedience looks like. It was shown in this verse. Or this comes from our very own pastor. Jesus and the Father are both the same God. Diba? May isa pa eh. Tatlo ba yung God natin? Diba? Jesus, Father, tsaka Holy Spirit. Tama? Tama? Oy, wala. Tama hindi? Ay, di marang sumago. Tama hindi? Uy, tama hindi? 
Tatlo ba yung God natin? Apat nga po eh. Diba? Isa lang mga kapatid. Isa lang. But in three person. And we have Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father and Jesus is the same God. But imagine, Jesus submitted to the Father's will. For what? He submitted to the authority of the Father to execute the redemption plan of the Father to mankind. Guys, Jesus is God, but He submitted. Christianity is imitating Jesus, and our walk is to walk in love like Jesus did. To walk in love is to walk in obedience, which leads us to this first point. Obedience is a manifestation of love. Since nakita natin kung paano nag-obey si Jesus. Imagine kung hindi siya sumunod. Ano kayong ginangyari sa atin ngayon, no? When we obey, it manifests our love for one another. But, obeying doesn't mean you are already honoring them. Paano po nangyari yun? Parang ganito lang yan. We have partial obedience and selective obedience. Partial obedience, ito lang yung gusto mong sundin. Sabi ni mama, maghugas ka ng pinggan at maglinis ng bahay. Gusto mo lang maghugas ng pinggan. Partial obedience. Next, selective obedience. Sinabi ni Kuya Eman, may meeting ngayon. Hindi ka umaten. Pero sinabi ni Pastor, may mentoring, aaten ka. Selective obedience. Who are we really do honor in this um, submission that God has subjected us? Example sa bahay niyo. Sinabi na ni mama, matulog ka. Nagtalukbong ka pa kunwari. Pare, talukbong ka, no? Dahil nakita ni mama may ilaw yung kumot, pinatayan ka ngayon ng wifi, namatay na si Axie. ba? Diba? Since we are not obeying, mas madalas tayo yung talo. Another thing, we say we honor our leaders, tama? We honor our leaders, lalo na mga go one by one. And of course, yung mga ministers natin, we honor our leaders and talagang sinisik natin yung guidance nila. Sabi ni leader, nag-share ka. Sabi ni leader, pag-pray mo muna, pare. Wait for God's leading and time. Hindi mo niligawan! Pero chinat mo naman. ba? Diba? Obedience is an inherent part of working out our salvation. Kasama sa salvation natin ang pagsunod. A result of God's work in His people. May resulta ang salvation sa atin at isa yon. Isa doon ay ang pagsunod at ang pagmamahal. Now, if we are not obeying, ano kayang resulta ng salvation natin? It says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. Maliit, basa nyo. Sabi dito, But among you there must, this is not negotiable, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality. At ipaw, nagpa-plong naman yung sight. Hindi ko naman binisit. Pero tumambay ka sa site na nagpapapap lahat, di ba? Mm. Sino na nalala ng mga animes dito? Madami yun. Sige, dad. There must be no hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed. Ano ba yung mga bagay na ginugusto natin? At gusto natin mas marami pa tayo. Not because these are improper for God, so... Uh, because these are improper for God's holy people. Imagine, tinawag ka niyang anak, pero kung ano-ano, pinapanood natin. Imagine, may pray tayo kay Lord, Lord, uh, ito po yung gusto ko, ganyan-ganyan. Pag nahingi mo na lahat, iba na naman ang mundo natin, di ba? Again, nor should be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather, thanksgiving. We're all aware na tayo personally, we struggle on the things that we say. Right? Minsan nasasabi na natin, hindi mo natin sinasadya. But, God reminds us to be more of thanksgiving rather than foolish talk. For of this, you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such person is idolater, has, an, has no any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Ang point lang yan, mga kapatid. Imagine, anak ka ng Panginoon. Iniisip mo, anak ka ng Panginoon, pero wala kang mamanahin. Makita mo ba yung dilema? Kapatid, anak ako. Iniisip mo, anak ako ng Panginoon, pero wala kang mamanahin. Bakit? Because of this. 
wala kang mamanahin. Ang tanong, hindi naman talaga very, alam mo yun, hindi madamat ang Lord. But to think na hindi tayo sumusunod, hindi rin kasi natin iniisip kung tinuturin natin ama ang Panginoon. Why ka naman hindi sumusunod? Dai, ba? Diba? Kung tinuturin mong mama, daddy, ang Lord, bakit hindi natin siya sinusunod? Now we know that we are all daughters and sons of God. We know the truth and obey it. We already know the truth and obey it because we have already encountered the Lord. At iba, paano naman yung mga hindi pa nakakilala kay Lord? Diba? Hindi pa nila nakikita si Lord. Hindi pa nila naririnig yung gospel. Pero ganyan pa rin yung mga ginagawa nila. Nakikita ko nga sila sa bar eh. Di ba nandun ka din? <laughs> Nakikita ko nga sila sa inuman eh. Di ba nandun ka din? O yan. It doesn't mean na, hin- na hindi na natin sila kakausapin, hindi natin sila lalapitan. Guys, they may be still living in a corrupted way, but we should not despise them. Our response would be in verse 6, it says here, Let no one deceive you with empty words. Yeah. Let no one deceive you in empty words. Bigyan natin ng practical. Love wins. Sarap, no? Love wins. Tapos may color, 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 color. Love wins. But, sabi nga ni Ate Carda sa purity, love is God and we don't define the, our own meaning of God because the very existence of God is love. If love wins, then God wins. Amen? Amen! Kung gusto niyo marinig ng full yun, may D-Week next week. Huwag niyo kakalimutan. And of course, since we are not to be deceived by these words, because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. If you're gonna read the Bible, isa lang, dalawa pala. Dalawa lang ang sitting sinunog ng Panginoon sa sobrang galit niya. And that is where the May flag doon, pang rainbow. Yun. Yun yun. I know you, you know that and I know today we are going to obey the Lord because this is what He says in His Word. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Do not be partners with them. Of course, we will not despise them. But we won't participate and we won't compromise. But, guys, Hindi, that, hindi dahil alam nating mali ang ginagawa ng mga kapatid natin na to. Lalayuan natin sila. We should be there for them. Why? Because kung wala ka, walang magbabalik sa kanila kay Kristo. Walang magpapakita sa kanila na may kayang magmahal sa kanila ng paulit-ulit. Kahit ano pang pagkakamali ang ginawa nila. We are there to bring and win them back to Christ. And you know what? Walking in love as Jesus did can be a dirty business. Bakit kaya dirty business ang pagmamahal dito sa mga hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon? One example, alam ko nakikinig kayo sa preachings ni Pastor Jomel for the past few um, weeks. Kilala niyo si Zacchaeus? Si Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Tapos ang ginawa niya, makit siya sa isang puno. Tapos sinanap niya si Jesus, ganyan. Tapos si Jesus ang tawag niya, Zacchaeus. He called him by name. Now, Ang ginawa ni Jesus, Zacchaeus come down at pumunta sa bahay, nakikain, nakikwentuhan. And then, because of what Jesus did, He redeemed the man. Nagbagong buhay, kapatid. Nagkaroon ng encounter kay Lord, kapatid, kaya nagbago. Imagine kung hindi tayo gagawa ng mga ganong paraan, hindi natin sila maririch. Why do we call it a dirty business? Guys, wala bang humusga kay Jesus? Meron! Nasa Bible pa nga eh. Diba? The Pharisees were talking about Jesus. Nusga nila, uy, sinner yun, ba't nandun si Jesus? Nakalak ba, banal siya? Diba? But Jesus was there because He's not thinking of those accusers. He's not thinking of those comments. He's thinking of a life to be redeemed by the Lord. And that's the same thing that happened to each one of us. Lahat tayo nasa putikan, pero lahat tayo pinuntahan. Loving the unlovely is not often a pleasant experience, but that is our calling. Hindi to madaling gawin, mahirap sundin, but this is our calling. To come to the lost people, to seek and save what was lost, just like Jesus did. 
true disciples of God responds to their calling. It's a manifestation of their love and reverence to God. Guys, your leaders, our leaders, leads us to Christ because we have only one pursuit and that is to be Christ-like. Yun ang pinaka-aim ng mga leaders. Bakit nila kayo nilid? Hindi para gayahin sila. Kundi para maramdaman nyo kung gano'n kayo kamahal ng Panginoon. And to do the same with those people who are still lost today. Let me share to you a selective obedience story. Yeah. Napanood niyo ba to? Dito lang sa pinaka inaabang ang show ng bayan. The DNW Late Night Show with Pass J. Yan. Sino nakaparad nito? Taas kamay. Ay, walang nakapanood? Hindi ka nakapanood? Mga kapatid, alam niyo ba, nung ECQ, yan pinapalabas. That's one hour. Mag-interview ka, they will, we will know about the people, we will be inspired. Why? Why did, why this church did this? To inspire people because we are already losing hope. ECQ pa yun, mga kapatid, walang vaccine. Walang cure. Wala pang hope. But, alam niyo ba, before this pandemic happens, binigyan ako ng sakit ni Ate Tin tsaka ni Doc, sabi nila sa akin. Pao, may sakit ka? Ano yun? Allergic ka kay pastor? <laughs> Grabe no, nangangati ka kapag nandiyan si pastor. No, not literally. Guys, hindi niyo makikita si Pao pag nandiyan si pastor. Pag nandiyan si pastor, umuwi na si Pao. <laughs> Bakit? Bakit ganon? Kasi, guys, I don't want, I don't revere the leaders when I was here at first. Mahirap i-transfer ng church, mga kapatid. Mahirap tanggapin. Pero, if you understand the Lord's will and their heart for the ministry, you will submit. First, kung meron mang nasa lista ng judgmental, ako siguro yun, hanggang number 10, sunod na 11. Doon na iba. Parang si Rose yung susunod. <laughs> Yan. I was judging the ministry. Sabi ko, napaka-worldly naman ang mga bata dito. Naka-shorts party. Diba? Hinusgahan yung, ano eh, yung service, no? And because of those judgment, because of those pre-judgment, I did not submit to the authority in that time. But when pandemic came, mga kapatid, heron na pa ako. Heron na ako. Imagine, si pastor, makikiusap, hindi ko kinaya. <laughs> makikiusap sa mga tropa natin, yung mga worship team, yung mga tumugtog doon, lahat na nakita nyo doon, kinausap ngayon. Why? He want to continue this ministry because of you. Masyado niyang mahal itong ministry para i-neglect for that time. Imagine walang, walang gamot. That is the real faith. By faith. Hindi ako bawamatay sa pandemic nito because I am going to serve my God. And I am going to fulfill the will of my God. Guys, every day or every other day susundo yan. Baka kami matutulog sa bahay nila. Imagine. Nagsusumiksi kami doon. Papakainin pa kami ni Pastor. Why? Because he want people to serve. Kung hindi ginawa ng mga leaders natin that time yon, siguro wala rin tayong online service ngayon. They did not invest on these things. But since they are thinking of you, they are thinking of us, they did this for us. That's the kind of heart that these leaders have for us. And because of that, he did not convince me to submit to him. Sabi ko, Lord, ito ba yung puso na handa akong i-break every time I disobey? It breaks God's heart if you do that the same. Mahal ng Panginoon yan. Nilagay niya yan for a reason. And what we are going to do, only thing that we can do is obey them. You know what? If you want to find oaks, lahat ng magstay, and not mushroom, find those who have the same vision. Find those who have the same heart. Find those who have the same dreams for your ministry, for you, for these people. Imagine, share ko lang si Carla. Yan si Carla? Eight years na kami magkaibigan yan, pero kahit hanggang ngayon, malalaman nyo sa mga ministers, nag kami yan eh. Minsan nga, pati nga yung pagbili ng ice cream, anong oras pinag na. Hindi I don't brag na nag kami. But, we build that kind of relationship as siblings. Why? We don't stay, I don't stay because of her. She doesn't stay because of me. But we stay with one vision, and that is to serve God. If you want 
those people who will stay, find those who love the Lord the same. And hindi nyo ma- hindi kayo maiiwan. Hindi hindi kayo iiwan dahil hindi nila kayang iwan ang Panginoon. Kung binigyan ka ng pangarap ng Panginoon sa ministry na to, kung binigyan ka ng pangarap para sa church mo, huwag mong iwan kapatid. Just for yourself. Hindi binigay ng Panginoon ang pangarap sa iyo para sa ministry natin. Para iwan lang. God won't waste any dream in your heart because He's willing to fulfill it for you. Only You only need to do is obey. Yun lang. The people will see why you obeyed. This will lead them to believe in your faith. Pag nakita nilang sumunod ka, pag nakita mo yung leader mo kung gano'ng kakamahal, you will do the same, right? If people do the good things for you, nakaka-encourage to do the same, right? Now, your obedience to God and not of the things you want to pursue marks how deeply you want to surrender your life to Christ. Kung ayaw mong iwan lahat to para sa Panginoon, then praise God. Hanggang saan natin kayang sumunod sa Panginoon by denying ourselves. Your obedience to God matters because obedience leads to obedience. Okay pa kayo dyan? Balik tayo sa practical. Sino nagpunta sa watermark last time? Since we are showcasing, ano ba, ano ba yung lead ng obedience to call for obedience? Trending topic natin is vaccine. Diba? Nung unang panahon, may hoax-hoax pa dyan. Nakakamatay daw yung vaccine. Ganun. Magtitigurgur ka daw kapag may vaccine. Diba? Ngayon ang nangyari, may sumubok. Hindi naman namatay. May sumunod. Hindi naman namatay. Ngayon, tatlong araw ka na sa watermark. Pumipila, nagpapalista, hindi ka pa rin tinawag. Di ba, Jed? Si Jed. And Eloy? Pinipilahan na, mga kapatid, because it is proven that it is working. It's the same with our discipleship, mga kapatid. If we will just see what are the fruits of the one by one, you can't get enough of it. Later, you will see what are the heavenly fruits that we are going to harvest if we obey now. Every Christian has the ability to imitate God because Christ made it possible. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Therefore, live as children of the light. And the fruit of the light consists of goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Now, I want to give you some activity. Uy, na na nila yung physical na activity. I want you to put your hands like this. Ganyan. Kahit nakaupo lang. Yeah. Then, let us show the picture. Yan. I want you to cover your eyes just like that. Okay? Cover it now. Pero ang twist, huwag kang pipikit. Cover. Cover ka ko. O, huwag kang pipikit. Huwag kang pipikit. Takpan mo lang. Okay, hands down. Now, kung mapapansin mo, kung saan may ilaw, doon ka tumitingin. Tama? Kung saan may ilaw, doon ka may nakikita. Nung pinover mo ba ng buo, meron pa dito. Meron pa, di ba? May konti pa. Now, when you are in darkness, you really can't see. Kapag na, pinatay natin lahat ng ilaw dito, wala talagang source, wala ka talagang makikita. Tama? Pero, it's not that you are medically blind. Yung bulag ka talaga. It's not that you are already blind. It's just dark. That's why you can't see. But you have the ability to see. That's why, alam mo yun, itong so-called unbelievers natin, we should not treat them as blind people. Because they have the ability to see. That's why you need to be a light. Kailangan mong maging ilaw para malaman nila na meron pang pag-asa. They are not blind. You're just not there. Imagine, how can we be a light to these people? We obey. Obey this verse that we need to be a light to this Unbelievers. Kapatid, kung hindi ka mag-o-obey, mananatiling bulag tong generation na to. 
Kung hindi ka mag-obey, mananatiling walang nakikitang pag-asa itong generation na to. Are you willing to obey the Lord and walk in His light? I know you are. But, ito na naman po tayo. Now comes our excuse. May excuse tayo eh. Kukwentuhan po kayo ng, sino dito yung may ref? Wala kayong ref? I doubt, kakakuha nyo lang ng lamig na ulam kanina. Ref, pero we're gonna talk about the freezer. Yan. Bakit tayo nagsistore sa freezer? Yung maraming binili si tatay na, bagong katayan anak. Limang kilo nga lang anak, di natin kayang ubusin. So, nalagay niya muna yung apat na kilo sa ref. Para saan? To preserve. To prolong. Now, scientifically speaking, oh, mawalang galang na kay Glenn, scientifically speaking, kapag nasa freezer ka, it slowers or stops the growth of bacteria. So, ibig sabihin, hindi magde-degrade yung bacteria, hindi maglalamat-lamat, hindi mabubulok yung karne. Why? Because it is stored in cold and dark place. But on the contrary, when you are in cold state, mga kapatid, kapag nanlalamig ka na at nananatili ka sa dilim, sa kasalanan na ginagawa mo, you won't grow. You won't grow just like those bacteria. That's why obedience is required for growth. You need to be in the light for you to grow. Now, baby nga, nagpapaaraw, kapatid. Labas ka naman. Yung, yung baby nga, pinapaarawan, vitamin D. Vitamin E yun. Diba? Go out of your comfort zone and grow. Just like this plant. Alam niyo ba, itong mga plants, hindi ko botanista, pero alam niyo ba, bigyan ko kayo ng small experiment sa bahay niyo. Kuyo kayo yung bubot na plant, yung maliit lang. Then, ilap, kunyari, ito yung window, lagay mo siya dito. After some days, It will grow just like this. Hindi man ganyang kalaki, but just like that. Every plant, even all these plants that God created, kahit nga damo, damo pa yon. they follow the light. Sumusunod, lumalago, yumayabong because it follows the light. Kapatid, nakakaya naman itong mga plant, sumusunod sa liwanag. Oh. Kailan ka susunod? Kailan? Kailan mo susundin ang Panginoon? To affirm you, you are chosen and you are called. Hindi yun tanong. Hindi rin yun tanong para sa sayo. Para sa sayo at tanong mo sa sarili mo. I want to affirm you that you are chosen and you are called by God. Pero minsan tinatanong pa rin natin sa sarili natin kung tama ba tong ginagawa ko, Lord? Or nasa tamang landas pa ba tayo? Diba? We don't know what to follow. We don't know what to do with our lives. We keep wanting na, Lord, gusto kong pumunta sa ganito. Gusto kong i-achieve yung ganito. Gusto, ganito yung gusto kong course, Lord, eh. Wala naman kayong budget. Pinilit mo pa yung magulang mo. Ito yung mga bagay na gusto natin i-pursue, but, Lord, tama ba ito? Imagine na ka na sa pagitan, oh. Lord, tama ba ito? Gusto ko po ito. God's will na po ba ito? Di ba? Ginawa pa excuse, eh. Bakit tayo naguguluhan ano yung dapat natin gawin sa buhay kung hindi na natin ginagawa yung unang pinagawa sa atin ng Panginoon? Maguguluhan ka talaga. Imagine, nasa step 5 ka na, hindi ka pa nag-step 1. If you are so naguguluhan sa buhay mo ngayon, maybe you need a restart. Maybe you need to go back to that first step to know that you are really following God. Instead na tanungin natin kung nasa tamang lugar ba tayo ngayon, let's ask ourselves, is God my priority? Because it eliminates na ito yung gusto mo kung hindi naman para sa Panginoon. Tama? Next, nagdi-disciple ka na ba? Are you obeying your parents, your leaders, and your church? Kung hindi, kapatid, let's not go out of the box yet. Not yet. Don't let God obey your so- so-called persistent prayers. Lord, every day ko pinit yung prayer ito. Gusto ko na nito, Lord. Hindi pa naman pwede, kapatid. Don't let God obey those so-called persistent prayers, but fill yourself with God so that you will not Desire the things outside of His will. Kung puno ka ng Panginoon, hindi mo gugustuhin umalis. Kung puno ka ng Panginoon, hindi ka magdadoubt kung anong dapat gawin mo sa buhay mo because you know that God is sustaining you. If you have something from the Lord, you won't trade it for anything. Now, 
what hinders us to obey. Sabi dito, kahit balibalik ta rin natin, this hinders us. Sin. Yan. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 to 14, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. You are light, kapatid. It is, a shameful, it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Sino dito yung pinagmalaking may pinanood siya kahapon? Wala, di ba? Then, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes the light. This is why God said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and let Christ shine upon you. When we call someone's action a sin, they will be offended. Imagine. Saan si Ate Tin? Ate Tin ba na dyan? Kunyari, nag-post si Ate Tin sa IG. Yung ako siya. Kahit sino send lang sa akin yun. Nag-post si Ate Tin sa IG, naka-tubis, pare. Full time. Imagine. We are not condemning those people. Example si Ate Tin, hindi nag-post. Birhen yun, Diyos ko. <laughs> hindi yun nag-post sa example lang. O, baka hanapin nyo, ha? At Christine B6. Follow Instagram. Yan. When we call someone else action sin, they will be offended. Imagine, napaka, napaka proud niyan mag-post. Then sasabihin mo, bastos yung pinost mo. Siyempre, hindi siya matutuwa. Tama? Tama? Exactly. But it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7 to 8, So the honor is for you who believe. It's for you who believe. But those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and rock of offense. Kapatid, yung correction na binigay sa atin at ways na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon is like a solid rock. Kung hindi mo titingnan sa liwanag, madadapa ka. Sino yung nadapa dito na tumawa after? Diba? Masasaktan ka una, pero minsan matatawa ka din, syempre. Pero masakit. Tama? Masakit. They stumble because they disobey the word. And they were destined to do. They are not destined to stumble, but they are destined na masaktan because they disobey. That's the fruit of sin in our lives, mga kapatid. People do not like having their dirty secrets exposed. But this is exactly what the gospel does and what we are called to do as well. Tinawag tayo ng Panginoon to expose these simple little things. Not to shame the people. Hindi natin i-expose ito sa light para mapahiya sila. Guys, imagine, ilalapit ko to sa ilaw para maliwanagan siya. Hindi ipap- ilalapit mo sa ilaw para ibulgar kung ano ang pinagagagawa niya sa buhay. No, that's different. Nilalapit natin sila sa light for them to see that they are valuable and they should not pursue those things. Because nalalamatan itong holiness na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. For us Christ- Christians, this is the good news. Sin is defeated. Amen? Amen. Ang kasalanan ay pinanalunan ng Panginoon sa pagmamagitan ng pagsunod. We can also obey what the Lord says because we are already victorious over sin through Christ Jesus. Hindi mo na kailangan mamatay para sa cross, kapatid. Because Christ died for you. What you need to do is to obey. Now another reason what causes us to disobey is selfishness. It says here, sabi to ni Pastor, napakatapak nito sa akin, the opposite of love is not hate. Guys, the opposite of love is not hate. It's selfishness. Self over love. They choose self over God. Usually, bakit hindi tayo sumusunod? Kasi, ba't di tayo nag-disciple? Ba't di natin pinapakita din? Kasi minsan nangyaya tayo, baka usgan tayo. They, we choose our own ego. We choose our own image. But we are not living out the integrity as Christians. Now, Let's not talk about how selfish we are, but let's talk about the selflessness of Jesus. Jesus have us, ikaw at ako, nung namatay siya sa cross 2,000 years ago. He was selfless. Nauna ka at nauna tayong lahat before Him. Imagine kung hindi inuna ng Panginoon yung buhay natin. Nasaan kaya tayo ngayon? Because of His obedience and selflessness, we are free. 
We are free to attend here. We are free to worship God. We are free to cry out to God. We are free to pray and hear the voice of God. Now, are we doing it? Guys, we are already free. We just need to do it. Jesus submitted to the Father. And Jesus became the love offering of the Father to mankind. Imagine, ganito tayo kamahal ng Father. Why did Jesus submit to the Father? Because He loved us the same, just like the Father did at first. That's why in our point number three, submission is our love offering. Let's ask ourselves, are we offering our submission, our obedience to our leaders because we love them? Let's offer our submission as love offering. It is, it is said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. When we submit, we offer our allegiance to our leaders. Nakikiisa tayo sa pagpapakumbaba, sa pagsunod at pagsuporta, as Jesus did with the Father. Now, did you know that submission is an act of being wise? Why? It says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 21, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but wise, but making most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. If we submit to God and to our authorities, we will not grow ng pataliwas sa Panginoon. One example, do not get drunk on wine. Oh, may argument na naman tayo dito. Si Jesus ka, gumawa pa ng wine eh. Drunk ang usapan, mga kapatid. Drunk. Which leads to debauchery instead of being filled with the Spirit. Imagine may Holy Spirit ka, pero may Spirit ka rin ng alcohol. Dalawa na sila, girl. Diba? Di, sino kayang mananalo? That's why we are not encouraged to be drunk. Next. It says in verse 19, Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, songs of the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God for the Father in everything, in the name of Jesus. Wise people consider what is appropriate. If you are wise and you are living wise, alam mo dapat kung ano ang tama mula sa mali. Whatever is pleasing to God and whatever honors God, that's the thing we want, we should pursue. How to be wise? Submit to authority. How to be wise? Submit to the word of God. When we are walking in the will of our God, our source of joy and peace should not come from temporary substances. Hindi sa pagpaparty tayo mafeel ng joy and peace, but in the presence of the Lord. So when we are rejoicing, hindi kailangan ng pag ano matag doon? paglalasing. But those temporary substances should be eliminated. But also our joy and peace from God Himself through His Spirit. Another submission is yielding to God's appointed authority. What does Philippians two chapter twelve verse say? I Chapter 2, verse 12 to 13 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence, but not much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Blah, blah. Do everything without grumbling and arguing. Yeah. This points us how should we submit to our leaders. We do not urge grumbling and arguing. As God's children, we are, promo- we are to promote unity. So, kunyari, may meeting man kayo, may, may pagpaplano sa fellowship, saan man yan. You can say your opinions. You can say uh, your suggestions. But, since we have leaders, since we have authorities, we submit to them because they are God's appointed person to lead us. They are appointed in our lives for a reason. And trust God in that. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. It says here, I know that we are all young here. At meron tayo mga elders in the church. We are to respect them and honor them and we submit to them. 
maybe not all the time mas matanda yung leader mo sa'yo, but this is what God says. We submit and we honor our previous generation. And lastly, submission honors. It says in Hebrews 13 chapter 17, Obey your leaders and submit to them for they are watching over your souls. Guys, may nagpe-pray kayo niyan. Every time na maalala nila kayo, minsan nakakain na lang yan eh, pagpe-pray pa kayo eh. Imagine, may sarili kayong buhay, may sarili silang buhay, pero iniisip nila kayo. So please, let them do this with joy and not with groaning. For that would be of no advantage of you. Guys, those who are under spiritual readership should cooperate as much as possible. Kapag ka, chinat ka, tinanong ka, kinamusta ka, reply ka naman. Kapag tinanong ka, anong oras ka darating, o darating ka ba, reply ka naman. Huwag na nating pahirapan yung mga leader natin, kapatid. Mahirap na yung ginagawa nila. Let them enjoy the process of discipling and discipling you, leading you. Let them enjoy that. Because this is already a big responsibility for these leaders before God. And of course, when we submit to them, we don't lose as we surrender. We don't lose when we surrender, we just live out our trust and that develops our faith. Guys, it cuts deeper sa pag-submit mo sa tao. Kasi may sarili kang opinion, pili mo matalino ka. But you need to submit. And that's the time when you surrender your own opinion, yourself, before your leaders. When we surrender, hindi tayo natatalo. We just live out our trust. Nagtitiwala ako sa leader ko at sa Panginoon. And that develops our faith to them. I want you to see surrendered lives right here. Kung titingnan natin tong picture na yan, hindi yan. Kasi baso yan eh. Yan. <laughs> if you can see those people dyan sa picture na yan, this is the core. This is the core of deep and wide. And alam nyo, sobrang nakaka-encourage ang mga tao na yan. Kasi Isa dyan, let's not define, kasi alam na nila yon. Maglilingkod, with or without jowa. Di ba? Narinig ko yun eh. Actually, hindi nga jowa eh. Maglilingkod, with or without spouse. Grabe. Ibig sabihin, they have their mind set on the calling of Jesus Christ. We are not called na mag-asawa, pero maganda yun. Pero we are called to make disciples, serve the kingdom, and serve the Lord, offer our lives as living sacrifices for the king. That's what we are called for. Another, one of our leaders said, usap kami, ang gandang mag-disciple ng 12, no? Paano kaya mag-disciple ng 12? Imbis na i-cheer ko, actually, ako talaga yung great oppressor ng team. Eh. Ang tanong ko sa kanya, bakit mo gusto ng 12? Siyempre, for the Lord. Kasi siyempre, gusto ko lang sabihin niya ng ano. Siyempre, gusto ko ng ano. May dosi ako, ganun. Kumapig ka pa, di ba? Hindi, hindi narinig ka mga kapatid. Ang sabi niya sa akin, this is for the Lord. Imagine, yung dami ng taong sasalubong sa'yo sa langit kapag umuwi ka na. Grabe! These people know the rewards in Christ because obedience comes with a great reward. It is said in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown Him as you have helped His people and continue to help them. Guys, sa lahat ng sakit at pait ng pagsunod, there's a reward right there. Obedience comes with this reward. Kahit nga wala pa eh. Imagine, sinave ka na ng Panginoon, you don't need a reward. But still, God wants to reward you. Sa pagpili mo sa Panginoon, wala kang katalo. Wala kang katalo, kapatid. You want to see some rewards? You want to see some rewards? Let them see the reward. This one. These hundreds of people worshiping the Lord and encountering the Lord in a day week. This is a physical reward. Guys, if you will just feel that these people loves the Lord after they encounter God, you will not get enough of it. You will not get enough of it. That's why gusto mo pa. Gusto mo pang maglingkod? Gusto mo pang sumunod? Gusto mo pang pangalagaan itong mga taong to? Guys, if we are pleased to see these people na na-encounter ang Panginoon, 
we are so overwhelmed. What more is the reward waiting on heaven as we obey the Lord? Guys, obedience is not easy. Obedience is not easy, but it's worth it. Balik kayo sa akin nang sumunod kayo at nasaktan kayo. Ako mismong gagawa. Wala pa akong narinig at nakita sa Bible na sumunod sa Panginoon at napahiya. Even I, who obeyed the Lord, by all means, guys, we obey the Lord. Remember, God has one only Son, and that's Jesus. And He obeyed and fulfilled the will of the Father for Him. Let me invite everyone to stand. Guys, in this lifetime, we only have one cross to bear. And that cost everything. Kung anong nakikita mo sa sarili mo ngayon, anong suot mo, anong pamilya mo, anong gagawin mo, what are your plans, what are your dreams, what are your future plans or challenges, lahat yan kapatid. Kung gusto mong sumunod sa Panginoon, you will give a life cost. And God cost our everything. Guys, walang katalo sa Panginoon. All we need to do is obey. We only have one cross to bear. One cross to bear. And that cost everything. And right now, I know, meron tayong mga bisita. But, I want to see those hands. I want to see their hands. Nasaan yung mga kabisita natin? Huwag kang mahiya. This is the best thing that you will do in your life. Now, dito, yan. Hi. Hi. Hello po. And right now, um, we are going to receive one best thing that God has given us. And that is Jesus. The salvation that comes from the very life of our God. And today, we are going to receive. I want you to open your hearts, close your eyes, and let's renew our vows to God. Can we do that? Let's close our eyes and let's talk to God. Let's assess. Hanggang saan ba talaga tayo sumusunod sa Panginoon? Are we superficial? Are we deep? But beyond all that, I know we are willing. And right now, as we join our newcomers and new believer in Christ, let us pray personally and claim God's salvation. This is one great thing and the very purpose of our lives that is to live for Christ. Samahan natin siya, mga kapatid. This is the prayer. Panginoon, maraming salamat sa pag-ibig at sakripisyo na ginawa mo sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Panginoong Jesus, ako'y nagsisisi sa lahat ng aking mga kasalanan. Patawarin mo po ako sa lahat ng kasalanan ito. Panginoong Jesus, binubuksan ko po ang aking puso dahil naniniwala po ako na namatay ka sa krus ng Kalbaryo para sa aking mga kasalanan at nabuhay kang muli para sa aking kaligtasan. Panginoong Isus, tinatanggap kita bilang aking Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Mula ngayon at magpakailanman, hindi na ako muli mamumuhay ng dati. And right now, I want you to still close your eyes, raise your hands. Ayaw mo man o hindi, raise your hands. We are going to pray, we are going to declare that this life that God has redeemed today is for Christ alone. Father God, I pray for all of us, your people, your beloved children, your sons and daughters in Christ. I know, Lord, that deep within us, I know that we really love you, God. 
We want to offer our lives to you. We want to surrender our anxieties. We want to surrender ourselves. We want to surrender lahat ng bigat na meron kami ngayon na naghinder sa amin para sundin ka, Panginoon. Ngayon pa lamang, Lord, we receive your healing. We receive your forgiveness already, God. And right now, we are going to release it for us to be redeemed, Panginoon, and be fully surrendering our lives to you, God. Lord, these people, they are raising their hands, Lord. Hindi ka bulag. Hindi ka bini. And you promise to be with us. And right now, Lord God, as we surrender our lives to you, Father, make us a warrior. Make us a light, oh God. Make us a love for the people. Make us compassionate. Make us kind to these people that they will also see that we have one true God in our lives. Lord, ready our hearts because we are going to experience your transformation as we obey you today. Let's sing this song. 